booktube science fiction reads here today with a uh bookshelf tour um somebody recently sent me an email asking if i would uh do one of these videos and my first thought was well i'll just direct them to my very first video which was a tour of my library but uh, having thought about it my shelves have actually changed quite a lot my collection um and since i recently tidied them up like it looks fairly organized i thought why don't I just uh, film an updated video? Um, I'm also in a new location and I have another bookshelf and a half, so the collection is considerably larger. Um, so I figured I'd just film a new video. Uh, but I have to preface by saying uh, there is very little organization to this. Um, it really doesn't make much sense other than I'm pretty OCD about organization, so they're practically organized by the size of the books. You'll see a lot of the hardcovers are together. A lot of the trade paperbacks and mass market paperbacks are all on the same shelves. So genre, authors, subgenre, they're all mixed. Um, some people will probably find it infuriating. Um, I kind of do. It's kind of annoying, but um, I've tried layouts that actually make sense and then I just they don't look nice <laughs> I like my books to be lined up same size um, but I have been thinking about it so I might change um, the layout completely uh, and so it's a good time to actually kind of I don't know document what it looks like now so I figured I'd just go through the shelves um, and then for all of time I'll have a, a record of my bookshelves looking nice and orderly so I guess we'll just go in order. Um, I have a lot of C.J. Cherry. Oh, that's C.S. Friedman. Um, I do have a lot of C.J. Cherry here. Although I've not read a lot of her books. I've read um, all the Morgane books. And I have a ton of her books in hardcover that are not on the shelves. But uh, anyway, uh, C.S. Friedman up here. I've only read In Conquest Born, which is an amazing uh, space opera that doesn't get enough um, praise or notice. And I'm slowly collecting the rest of her books there. Some Jack Chalker. I don't think I've read any of his books other than short stories, but I've got a couple of his series here. The Medusa one. What's that actually called? Oh, The Four Lords. Um, I do have all four of those. Um, and then this random series by Sherwood Smith and Dave Throwbridge, which I don't know much about, but I, I just recently got that. Um, down here, Jack McDevitt. I've read his um, entire Priscilla Hutchins series aside from the prequel, Starhawk. So that and Deep Six are not here because I had them in hardcover and I got rid of them because I like organization. So I'm going to replace those um, with the paperbacks. And that series started with Engines of God, which gave me Revelation Space vibes for a while because it's basically archeology span in space with um, dead alien races and maybe a few that are still living, which I really enjoy archaeology uh, in my science fiction. And then he's got that other series, the name of which I'm forgetting, but it's connected. It starts with A Talent for War. I'm looking forward to reading that, but I want more of them before I start. Um, John Scalzi books, some of the first science fiction I read. Um, here's a book I refer to a lot. Um, Stephen Andrews from Outlaw Bookseller. Um, he sent me that, and I'm constantly referring to it when I start reading a new book or author. Um, I've got a couple Charles Strauss there. I haven't read those ones, but I have some hardcovers of his elsewhere. Which, that's what I find annoying, having some paperbacks over here and some hardcovers of the same author elsewhere, but I don't like them lined up together when they're vastly different sizes. Um, A.A. Atonaso, I've heard a lot about him. His stuff is pretty trippy. I really need to start that. Michael Moorcock, which I recently just got into. I read the cor th first three Quorum books, and I've got a couple more of his books to add to the shelves, but I need to do a book haul video first. Uh, S.M. Sterling, who I think writes a lot of alternate history books, maybe? I've only read The Sky People, and I have the sequel. It was just fun. It was written in the style of like uh, early pulp. I mean, you got people running around on Venus. Um, with discovering dinosaurs and stuff. <laughs> it was actually pretty fun. It took me forever. It took like three years to find a copy of In the Courts of the Crimson Kings, which I have not read yet, but um, I'm going to reread both of those sometime. They're 
uh, at least the first one was just fun. Then we get over to um, my Asimov and Clark collection I have together since they're two of my introductions to science fiction and obviously two landmarks in the history of science fiction. So starting with paperbacks, I've got, you know, just a bunch and not all of them are fiction. Um, I recently just sold like 50, 50 paperbacks of his to um, a girl locally for 20 bucks because they just weren't selling on eBay and I put them on Marketplace and uh, she was interested. So I just basically gave them away. Um, now that we've got the Clarks, I think I prefer Clark. I mean, they're both terrible at characterization <laughs> and their writing is not great, but I just love everything I've read by both of them. Then the hardcovers, this irritates me that these are not, uh, you know, all the same size, but I have read the full Odyssey series. Um, Asimov, Space of Her Own. I've never seen that anywhere or heard anyone mention it. It's just a collection of uh, um, female authors in science fiction so an anthology and then these really nice um who did these um double day i think you could order these once one a month they're gonna do all of his all of uh, asimov's books but they never got around to finishing all of them but they're really high quality um really nice leather band really cool expensive though um and i love these old um, these must be book club edition. Asimov's and the Foundation books, which were some of the first science fiction I read. There's a really cool, I don't think it's a first edition, but a really nice copy of uh, Fantastic Voyage, which I haven't read. I tend to like the, um, like the, uh, what am I trying to say here? The editions that are um, from overseas, really, books from the UK have such beautiful cover art compared to what we have over here. This book especially um, by Grafton. I just bought a couple Grafton books, which will be in a decent, or uh, upcoming book haul. Um, Ted Williams' Otherland series, which um, is basically what Ready Player One uh, is, but vastly larger and I'm sure way better written. I really want to read this, but um, what a commitment that would be. They are four massive books and I'm kind of a slow reader. I've got a bunch of Greg Bear here. I've got much more of his hardcovers elsewhere. Um, yeah, I don't think I've read any of those ones. Philip Jose Farmer, who I recently started reading. I was not, well, I was disappointed I didn't enjoy the uh, the first few um, River World books, but I'll get back to that series eventually. Um, Olaf Stapleton, I've only read Star Maker, but absolutely loved it. Um, and now it gets really random. You've got some classics mixed in with some stuff uh, you've never heard of. Saberhagen, Willis, and then the only Dragonlance books I have. Well, yeah. I think those are the only Dragonlance books I have, the first three, which I, I'm i curious about. They're YA-ish, but... And again, just... There's, like, some cyberpunk stuff. Gibson and then Hardwired, which I really want to get around to. Ballard, I want to read J.G. Ballard. Yeah, so this is the kind of stuff that irritates me, but they're all old paperbacks, roughly the same size. <laughs> and I like that they uh, they line up and look orderly. Julian May, I really want to read some of those. Um, what's that series where they get sent back to in time? It's not coming to me at the moment. Um, damn, volume two of Nightland. I just bought that two days ago thinking I had volume one. Uh, that's unfortunate. That'll be in a book haul, but uh, now I've got two. Um, some John Bronner's, I haven't read much Bronner. E.E. Um, e. Doc Smith. I loved the some of the early some of his stuff. That's the first bookshelf. Um, let's go clear across the top, which is almost entirely fantasy, which I've only recently started getting into and collecting. I already showed the C.J. Cherries. Some of the first fantasy I read um, were the Morgane books. 
Clive Barker is someone I want to check out. Um, the Deathgate Cycle, I just read the first one recently and I quite enjoyed that and then I bought all the rest in paperback. Um, Stephen R. Donaldson, I was not a major fan of his um, five book uh, gap cycle here. It just got too repetitive and too dark. Uh, I swore I'd never read anything by him again. Now I can't remember how I then came across the Thomas Covenant books um, or how I managed to convince myself to start them, but I did very much enjoy the first trilogy, um, even though it was hard to uh, live with that character for three books. And I immediately read the next three, which was, uh, again, I enjoyed them, but it was torture. I think the story was um, better told if it just ended with the first three. The next three are okay. It's still a good ending. Um, and I bought the next four at great expense <laughs> online. But uh, by the time I finished um, White Gold Wielder, I was done. Uh, I did not want to read the next four. And Library Ladder uh, makes a good argument for stopping after the first six. Um, as well as stopping after the first three, if you like, because it's really, really good. I love these books. I got all three uh, for a dollar each at a used bookstore, and they're absolutely beautiful. I wrapped them in plastic. Um, those covers, China Mavel. Um, of course, I've mentioned a thousand times. My favorite book is uh, Perdido Street Station. I did read uh, all three of those right there, and some of his other stuff, like King Rat was good. Rail C, which was YA, I should read that. Embassy Town, I need to read. Um, this Census Taker, which may not be common knowledge, but it's it's definitely a uh, part of these three books. It definitely takes, there's allusions. It takes place in the same world of Boss Lag. Um, there's some nice Easter eggs there for you to find if you've read these. R.A. Salvatore, I read the first, very early on, I read uh, Long before I started reading as an adult, I read the first four or five of the Dritz novels and um, really enjoyed those. So now I'm collecting these omnibuses. I believe there's one more. I'd have to confirm that. Over here to Neil Asher. I know I recently mentioned, um, I just completed his collection aside from, I think, I think I have everything by him aside from his most recent book, um, Weaponized, because it's not out in um, this size of paperback yet, but, uh, they look great on the shelf. Um, more, I've got more of his obscure stuff, which I, I believe he's re-releasing these, um, like print on demand on Amazon, I think. Um, like these, and he's re-releasing these two with cover art, which it'd be such a waste of money for me to replace them with the cover art ones, but I kind of feel like I'll end up doing that because, uh, they're nicer looking, and I absolutely love Asher's. Um, uh, not relatively too far in the future, but I love the Polity series. Absolutely loved it. Uh, the first three books of his I read were um, his other trilogy, the Owner series, um, and they were good. Not as good as um, the Polity stuff. I just became obsessed. I've read about half the Polity stuff. Um, pretty much in one long binge in a couple months and decided I need to slow down because I don't want to run out of his stuff. Now it's been like almost two years since I've read any Asher. I would like to do a video about all of his stuff, but um, I have terrible memory. I'd have to reread a bunch to have a, much of a um, comprehensive review sort of thing. And then to fill out the shelves, I threw in some Hamiltons there and a first edition of Revelation Space. Uh, down here, Gregory Benford, hard, hard SF, absolutely amazing series. Well, anything he writes is amazing. I did not finish this series because, uh, I read the first three or four that I had, and while waiting for the rest to arrive in the mail, I, uh, lost interest at the time, but really good stuff. Um, I think those books, they're heading toward the center of the galaxy. Very intriguing stuff. Um, Brian Aldiss, I've read some of his stuff. I want to read, um this trilogy sometime soon. Robert Forward, more hard SF. Dragon's Egg, absolutely incredible book. Um, one of my all-time favorites. Uh, it is hard SF, but my God, the world building, uh, the culture, the the alien species they come across is unlike anything you'll ever read. Starquake, the uh, sequel was good too. 
I really want to read his Roche Worlds and Time Masters. I think that's the only, must be the only Robert Ford I have. Um, I read the first two uh, Uplift books by Bryn. Those were some of the first SF I read. Um, they're space opera-ish. I think maybe a little, a touch of hard SF, certainly in Sundiver. As uh, they go to the center of the sun, that was some hard SF too. Um, this is a great collection of short stories. I don't think I ever finished it, but I think one of those is a, a Hugo winner or something. Uh, I did read that short story really good about the solar system uh, being stuck in a, a bubble. Um, and John Varley, the only Varley I've read is um, the Gaia trilogy, which was good, although I think it gets less good. I, I think the first book was great, the second book was uh, good, and the third book... Um, I didn't enjoy it as much, but still good stuff. Of course, I've read the Hyperion Cantos, incredible. John C. Wright, I, um, this book's insane. Uh, and, uh, I love that cover so much that uh, I actually got a tattoo of that on my shoulder, but, uh, and this is blasphemous, but I, I photoshopped this spaceship in the background out. So it's just this random ship arriving at a planet just the suggestion of a planet. I had that tattooed on my shoulder a couple of years ago, and uh, I actually didn't like how it turned out, unfortunately. I need to get it touched up, but uh, I don't wanna spend the money right now. Um, but I love that cover art um, by uh, John Harris, my favorite uh, science fiction uh, cover artist, probably. Uh, the Red Mars trilogy, I was so excited to read that, but um, it was such a slog to get through the first one. I don't think it was in the right headspace, so I only read Red Mars, but um, eventually I'll read all three again. Ender's Game, I read all of those very early on. Speaker for the Dead was my favorite. Ship of Fools by, uh, Richard Paul Rousseau, which it's also published under another name, I can't remember. That was like a good horror SF. Um, this series by William Tedford that no one's ever heard of. I've mentioned before in videos that I really liked it, but it's not it's not anything special. It's not well written. I just, for some reason, it really appealed to me and I had fun with it. Um, these two collaborate on a lot of stuff I, I need to read because um, they sound like hard SF, space opera-ish. Got some Peter Watts. Starfish, I read that. I don't I don't think I read the sequel. Uh, Verna Vinge, who I need, need to read his stuff. I Like I've mentioned, I've tried... Um, Oh, what's his, uh, not a deepness in the sky with the first one. Um, I gave that a try, but I wasn't in the mood and DNF'd it. Again, just a random collection here. All sorts of stuff, couple Bob Shaw's trilogy, um, like a science fantasy trilogy by Wayland Drew, which was uh, an author who only lived about an hour and a half away from me, who's passed away. Um... The Dark Tower series, which I mentioned in a video, was um, kind of my introduction to science fiction. I read that. There's not a lot of science fiction in it, but my takeaway was I really enjoyed the science fiction elements, um, and that's what made me try science fiction. So I have a weird entry into uh, science fiction literature. Um, some Jack Vans. And then way down, the, I'm literally crawling on the floor now. Um, there's a lot of Paul Anderson here. I haven't read a lot by him, but um, you know, he's got so many classics. Uh, Clifford Simak, I just read City, loved it. Probably liked Waystation more, but it's been years since I read that. Um, and we've got some random hardcovers down here. Um, Hal Clement, I think. Brandy over at... Um, Oh God, Book Galactic. I think she's doing a kind of uh, Howl for the Holidays later in the year, sort of read along thing, or just read some Hal Clement and talk about it. I'm gonna participate in that. Uh, back up to the top. Gary Gibson is someone I don't think I've ever heard mentioned on BookTube. What have I read by him? I read Final Days, Angel Stations. Those are two of his standalones. Absolutely love them, great space opera stuff. Um. And then he's got this, the Shoal trilogy. I think actually Marauder is part of that series as well. Um, I have not read any of those, but um, I keep forgetting about that. Those are those are bound to be good because I absolutely loved these two books. 
and I keep looking him up. He has not really re uh, written, it's probably been six months since I looked him up. The last time I looked him up, he hadn't written any more science fiction, I don't believe. Um, Emma Newman's series, I liked those. I haven't read Atlas alone, and I believe at this point there's yet another one. Um, Octavia Butler, Lilith Sprood, or the Xenogenesis trilogy. Great, great stuff. Butler is one of the best writers I've ever read, and she had an untimely death, so she didn't write um, as much as she could have. Um, Altered Carbon. We've got a few masterworks. Moving on. Um, people familiar with the channel will know that uh, Reynolds is my favorite author. I've got basically everything by him. All of his um, limited edition um, subterranean press books. Okay. That's a two in one. I'm not gonna be able to get that back. Troika, that's a good story. Here's actually a, uh, a CD by um, the band Hats Off Gentlemen which is named after the, well, the album is named after, um, you know, the, the ship from the Revelation Space series. And they're just a, a band w that released this album that's all based on, um, like you can tell, it's all based on Reynolds stuff. Really, really great music. So shout out to those guys. And then um, it irks me. I've ordered Redemption Arc twice to try <laughs> and replace this edition for the right size. And both times it was, uh, well, one time it was canceled. They didn't have it in stock. They thought they did. And the next time um, they sent one, it was the same size. So I've given up trying to get the correct size right now. They look great. <laughs> um, Tristan Palgren's um, Quietus series. I talked about these two books. I hope he writes more, if not in this series, just anything science fiction because um, it's incredible. Right up there with Asher. It's a blend of Asher and Banks, really. Tchaikovsky, great stuff. Uh, Suberg Semiosis, um, really epic, like, bio, bio, uh, sorry, biology, uh, science fiction, um, communicating with sentient plants. Absolutely loved that book. Um, the sequel's out. I got it somewhere here. We'll find it. Um, two books by Amy Thompson. Uh, shout out to uh, Seth, who introduced me to uh, this amazing author and uh, book. I don't know if he read the second one. I haven't read it yet, but I'll get to it. Charles Sheffield, who I've mentioned, absolutely love his, um, I'll call it light, hard SF with um, space opera and just a really fun series. I enjoyed his stuff. I've got some Niven, who I've recently been reading. I've got a few new books of his uh, to haul. Well, not new, but uh, new to me that aren't on the shelves yet because they haven't been in a book haul video. Well, Catherine Ann Gooman, Queen City Jazz was a wild, uh, wild story. I think there's three in that series. I only read the first. Um, it was kind of post-apocalypse um, with nanotechnology and stuff, really good. Stevenson, I've got, you know, all the banks, Ian and Banks, um, Science fiction. I've read, I think, half the culture books, I'm trying to save them because, you know, they're so good. Although it's been so long now that uh, I could read the majority of the ones I've already read and it would be like reading them for the first time. Really good stuff. Aztec, which is not uh, science fiction or fantasy, but a really good book. And again, now we're... The lower we get, the more uh, just random it gets. I've got most of the Expanse books. I read the first five and then I lost interest. I got the next two for gifts. Um, I mean, they're they're good and fun, but I think they're insanely overhyped. <laughs> um, if you've read much science fiction, uh, they're nothing special. They're good, but... Lots of um, book club edition stuff down here. Well, there's those Julian May books I want to read. Um, yeah, these are really nice editions. Old book club, or, or old book club editions. Lots of random stuff. Jack Vance. Um, I actually don't have 
these bookshelves don't come with enough shelves, so I've actually cheated. Some of these shelves are held up by books, and this is blasphemous, but you'll see Dark Orbit, which is a, a really good book. Um, in the Trader, Barry Cormat, those are actually holding up this shelf, which is not a black shelf, it's a white shelf. <laughs> I took that from some other bookshelf, um, cut it to the right size, colored the edge black, put down some uh, poster board, whatever you call that, and uh, from far away, you, you can't tell. A lot of these shelves are not actually, uh, they don't belong here at all, but you can't tell that in my videos in the background. <laughs> um, you gotta make it work if you wanna have this many books in a small apartment. Um, some of my favorite books up here. The Promise of the Child by Tom Toner. I have not read that yet. It's It promises to be so good, but um, I need to be in the right headspace because uh, it's going to take a lot of focus. There's so many characters, so many locations. Um, really looking forward to reading it, though. Um, the Complete Cord Wainer Smith science fiction stuff I recently read. Uh, really great. Absolutely love that stuff. The Snow Queen. I loved that. There it is. A Fire Upon the Deep. I need to read that. I need to give it a good shot. A good a fair chance. Um, Vacuum Flowers by Michael Swanwick. Um, one of the less popular uh, early cyberpunk books. You don't hear much mention of it, but it's it's really good. Uh, the Three Body Problem. I read the first two. Never got around to the third, but um, they were good. Uh, Carl Schroeder. You don't hear him mentioned enough. Epic. Um, Hard SF, science fantasy, space opera, really good. Ventus was uh, my favorite of his I've read so far. So I've got some Stephen Baxter here. All first, here's a Greg Bear, my favorite Greg Bear. I found this, uh, I got this for $1. It's book called Edition, but it's, whoa, um, really good um, end of the world story with um, all caused by a virus, basically. Might not be the greatest time to read it. <laughs> um, yeah, lots of the Stephen Baxter. I loved these books. I think I loved Time the most. Um, his hard SF is so, so good. His description of galaxies forming and decaying uh, is basically poetry. Where Time Winds Blow by Holdstock. Recently read that in a paperback. Loved it so much. I wanted a nice copy. Paul McCauley, who writes some hard SF. Uh, what have I read of his? 400 Billion Stars, which was epic, really good. Um, I need to finish the series. Oh, and here's another series uh, that nobody ever mentions by Al Robertson. Um, Crashing Heaven, I read, really good. Like, um, it's got cyberpunk elements. Um, just absolutely epic. I never did get around to reading the second one, but um, that is some good stuff right there. Does not get enough mention or praise. Blind Sight, one of the best books I've read. Um, here's a curio. I don't even know how to classify uh, The Slinks by Tatiana Tolstaya. It's Russian. Um, it must have been, yeah, it was translated. It's a post-apocalypse, just so bizarre. Uh, it's been years since I read it. I wish I could give a proper uh, description of it. Um, the people use live mice as currency, I think because they they use them for food, but it's, a, it's about a, a character who collects books and just reads whatever he can find in the remains of, um, you know, previous civilization, and it is bizarre. The ending, I can't even understand it. And underpinning the whole thing is, like, this, the slinks, this mythical creature that lives just outside of town, and sometimes you can hear it screaming and... It's got horror elements, fantasy. It is bizarre. More Stephen Baxter. Um, some Philip K. Dick. I have a lot more of omnibus and collections of his that just are not here. I have three massive plastic totes or boxes of books, and there's a lot of Philip K. Dick in there. Now we get to some uh, book club edition stuff. Got a lot of Silverberg. I've read these... Um, Short story collections that he edited that were good. Again, we're getting into just a random variety of stuff. There's a Hal Clement collection I'll probably read for the Hal Clement for the holidays coming up. Um, two omnibuses that are two-parters, and I only have 
one of each, but I'm looking for volume one of this. And then volume one of this as well. A couple annuals. Some Clifford Simak in hardcover. Um, a first edition Dragonflight by Anne McCaffrey. I believe it's a first edition. I have this on eBay for like $300 because uh, it's sold on there multiple times for that much money. And there's a couple others on there of this edition for over a thousand. I mean, who's gonna pay that? Um, but mine's up there. It's the first thing I ever uploaded to eBay like a year and a half ago. It's still on there. Um, because I mean, I've got other editions of it. I don't need that. Well, there's a nice book club edition right there. <clears throat> Chronicles of Amber. This one's so sun faded that the text is gone, but those are great books. Here's another one of my favorites, Adorned Ocean, which I've mentioned plenty of times. Really, really good. And like a indirect sequel, it takes place in the same kind of universe. There's an early, not a first edition, but um, close to it of Pod King of Mars. I also have that on eBay. I have a box of 50 something Highlands and I've never read anything by him. I just don't want to, uh, Get rid of them until I give them a try. Demolished Band by Alfred Bester. Another one of my favorite books here, um, Stargate by Pauline Gedge, which I've mentioned several times. It's a wild, just beautifully written science fantasy. Absolutely beautiful book. Heart-wrenching. Um, one of the best things I've ever read. Although, <laughs> I've had a couple people on YouTube message me to say they bought it based on my recommendation and none of those people have gotten back to me. Um, so maybe it's just a me thing. Maybe uh, it's not as good as I think it is. I loved it. Lots more random stuff. You know, Hamilton's massive series that I want to read, the Night Dawn books, but that's such a time commitment. One day. And as always, when we get to the bottom, it's quite the random assortment of stuff. Got some Charles Strauss there. Those are actually in the reverse order. This one comes first. I read that. Not as good as I thought it would be. And back down on the bottom, we've got another pretend black shelf. And just more random stuff. Hardcover book club editions. Just some very random Dune. And, uh, that's it for the standy bookshelves. I've only got these left. I've got the complete Redwall series, which I'm very nostalgic about because probably the first novels I ever read. I'm also probably the only person in the world who has <laughs> Redwall on the same shelf as the complete Barsoom books. Like that's so random. That's, that's just where I put them um, and lots more of Burroughs books. I got just a huge lot his stuff for 50 bucks about a year ago um and i've been reading niven lately i always loved that uh edition of analog for that cover art and the borderland of soul is a great story i've had this frame since before i even read the story great early hard sf by niven and then down here here's like a custom made um stamp it says ex libris with my name but uh, i only used it like four or five times and then i felt like i was um, disfiguring the books or something, but I, I don't know. Um, Brian Staleford, um, love his stuff. Lots of, most of these are from like the seventies. There's always like a biological mystery. These people on an alien planet trying to solve some crazy mystery. I've got my copy of Nift the Lean Out by Michael Shea because, um, this is actually worth a little money on eBay, but, uh, Oh, Stephen Lee Andrews on Outlaw Bookseller mentioned this um, and some other Shea stuff. So I got this out because I want to read it, but I've been um, consumed by a, a different series I just started the other day. Um, I used to, In my previous book tour video, I had a lot more Da, like a hundred more. Um, and I went through them after that and... Uh, just got rid of a bunch, sold them on eBay because I knew I was never going to get around to reading them and they needed the space. 
and some of the ace doubles, and then just some random action figures from my childhood. Uh, shout out to Rat Trap. Anybody remember Beast Wars from the 90s? Classic. <laughs> um, and that's it. Over here is where books that are going to be an upcoming book haul sit, and books that I'm currently reading. These will also be in a book haul, but this is what I'm reading right now. Um, really enjoying this. This is fun and intriguing. And I guess that's it. Like I said, I've got boxes of books sitting around, but uh, don't have the space right now. Um, as always, thanks for watching, and uh, see you next time.